Hey everybody, TD.Gamer. I am coming at you with a quick video regarding WWDC 2023. Ugh, this is a very um, split WWDC for me. I know that there are a lot of people who are really, really, really excited about some of the stuff, and I can't say that I'm not, but, you know, like everything, there's two sides to every coin. There's opinions are like, you know what, and everybody's got one. But I just wanted to talk really quick about what they announced as far as hardware, because I feel that it's important. And, you know, I'm looking for maybe something I missed. I got my scrubs on. I was working at the time. I had the thing trying to play in the background. I was trying to catch it. But um, from what I see, and I did get to watch most of it, which is um impressive and it is what it is i didn't think i'd be able to but i got to watch most of it um let's talk about what apple announced today first of all the mac pro okay we got an m2 mac pro the m2 ultra chip um this is a long time coming uh you know i was completely uh stoked to see this device the price i mean you can get a car some people get a car for less than this um but you know uh, for people who want like a powerhouse pc that i guess the new mac studio isn't going to be able to cut it for you want a little bit more expandability than you would with a mac studio then it makes perfect sense it makes perfect sense for a company to uh to 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 pick this up i don't think personally i mean you, you know, unless you got unless you got a few money um I mean, this is, this is, this is an industrial, this is a workstation for businesses that are in, um, like high end computational need. Um, I mean, I don't think anybody, I don't think that many people, um, really have the money, um, financial bandwidth have you to pick up this, uh, computer. It's a beautiful computer. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the cheese grater was always funny. And uh, obviously that's still present here. So they're using both basically <clears throat> just about the same um, form factor of the case that they did before. You can get it in a rack mount uh, or you can get it in a typical upright. Um, I don't think the wheels come with it. And you know, that's an expensive extra cost um, as people jokingly put in before, put up before. I wonder if the price of the wheels are the same. Um, it's, it's a pro device and you know what? It is what it is. Uh, let's pretend to order one here. I mean, we're looking at, let's get the regular stand up version. I mean, you're looking at minimum of seven grand upwards from there. Um, you know, this is the M2 ultra, uh, you have a 60 core GPU or a 76 core GPU, a thousand extra dollars memory is at a premium here um we kind of figured that apple's memory is often at a premium and then of course you of course you have your uh storage which keeps scaling up as you go so we get it and it's great for those who need it i don't think this meets um a lot of a home user um device uh, please let me know in the comments if you think i'm wrong but this is this is big money. This is this is this is Chad Apple. Okay, all right. So we know about that. Wasn't a big surprise. It was the only device that did not yet have, um, did not yet have a, uh, a, a Apple Silicon um, variant, and it was going by the Intel. And I believe the old Mac Studios were actually like beating some of the processing testing and speed testing performance testing of the old Intel Mac Pro. So Mac Studio, this interests me, okay? Um, and, you know, I have a, I have crazy use case scenarios. They're not normal, but um, I actually pre-ordered one of these. I ordered, I ordered the M2 Max, um, and there's an M2 Ultra. This is the M2 upgrade for the Mac Studio. <clears throat> interesting device. It was an inter interesting device when it first came out. It's still an inter interesting device today. It basically is packing in some of the, you know, MacBook Pro, um, M2 MacBook Pro stuff into a smaller form factor, oh, like a different form factor, 
And, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that you're going to be able to use as a small desktop. This to me is the home professional. That's me. This fits, right? Um, still the same as they did with the M1. The front ports are actually just USB on the, uh, on the M2 Max, and they are Thunderbolts on the M2 Ultra. Um, as far as looking at the back of the device, let's learn more. Oh, wait, we went to Pro again. Sorry. Let's try that again. So we'll go to Mac Studio. Um, you know, it's a $2,000 computer. I don't think it's that unreasonable for what you're getting. I mean, on the back I.O., you're getting four Thunderbolt ports. You're getting 10 gigabit Ethernet. This thing alone, if you buy a, if you buy a Thunderbolt dongle 10 gigabit um, Ethernet, it's like 200 bucks. So, you know, it's worth it. You got high-speed USB. You have HDMI. I believe this is HDMI 1.2 because I think this does 4K up to 200 and some hertz. Um, we can check that to be sure. Um, but it would be dumb in this day and age to have a HDMI port that is only doing 60 hertz. That's how I feel. M2 Max, M2 Ultra, there's the differences in uh, each one of the uh, chips. Uh, thir you know, 12 core versus 24, 38 core GPU, 76. So basically, as we said, it's two M2 Maxes making M2, M2 Ultra um, for the most part. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> It's, it's, it's for people who make videos, want to make music. If you watch the, um, if you watch the uh, keynote, I mean, apparently the people who make Saturday Night Live are, are producing their show on these things. So there's certainly nothing wrong with utilizing this. So, um, gives you some of the benchmarks, which I always find interesting for Apple because, you know, they, they decide what they're going to put the computer against and they pick specifically things that are going to make it look great and that's advertising and i expect that um but basically i believe this was um initially uh, some of the data was uh putting it against the m1 ultra versus um and the m1 max versus the m2 um so there, there's a decent performance boost here i mean it's it's no joke it's no joke and and it tells you they give you some real world examples using some um, Adobe software in the keynote. So it's pretty small. As you know, I believe it's the same exact size as the previous version. I do like the card slot here for people who do, you know, videos on their camera. They need to make, they need to make videos and you can just pop it in there and it's just right there in front of you. That's great. Um, I think that this is going to serve me well. Um, and one of the reasons that it's going to serve me well is because I actually, um, like a clean setup. And I was actually trying to utilize 10 gigabit ethernet as my uh, Final Cut Pro library and it works, but every once in a while something gets glitchy with the, with the 10 gigabit um, ethernet connection. And all of a sudden, if that fails in the middle of an edit, you're going to lose everything. And I've done that twice now and I'm sick of losing stuff and I'm not going to do that again. So uh, this will be the device I'm, I was trying to use a laptop, just one Apple product, you know, laptop, plug it in, work as a desktop, and then, you know, take it on the road. But I'm thinking I'm going to do the M2 uh, Max Studio, and I'm going to pick up the new iPad Air, or I'm sorry, the uh, MacBook Air as well, and get rid of my MacBook Pro. That's my current feeling. But again, um, really nice... Um, to see this being upgraded into the newest, um, uh, the newest uh, M2 Apple Silicon. So that's great. That's great. So then another good thing, right? So uh, we talked about, uh, I'm trying to see, HDMI supports up to 8K res. Yeah, so I, this is the, the uh, a newer HDMI port. This is not an old HDMI port. Good. So let's go back. MacBook Air, right? This, I think, was probably the most important um, announcement of the day. I mean, basically because um, this announcement is, is touting, I believe, Apple's most popular laptop for the, for, the, um, for the public. I mean, this is the thing that sells the most. Um, it's thin. It's light. It, um, it, does, it does a great job. Uh, it's, you know, it's got the M2... M2 chip. It has a long battery life. That stuff is great. 
Um, and the only thing that was really holding it back was real estate. So it's great to see that they've just brought it up to speed, speed with screen real estate. Um, it still has, I believe the same ports that the old versions had. So that's fine. Um, I think for most people, that's going to be enough for if you're on the road. Now, if you want to make this your, your only rig, your absolutely only rig, that may be a little bit difficult because um, you're not going to have as much expandability as you do as a MacBook Pro. I mean, you have two ports um, that are going to go um, away from the MacBook Pro to the MacBook Air. So you're going from four. I, I, want to, I hope it's Thunderbolt. Um, it should be Thunderbolt, right? Um, so it's going to go from four, four ports on a Pro to two ports, uh, which isn't that much different from the 13-inch, I believe. But it is... I assume I'm going to be able to, you know, edit some videos and do some productive work as well. So I think that for the most part, this is going to be the biggest seller of the keynote. Yeah, see, it's two Thunderbolts. Somebody online said USB-C and I'm like, I, theoretically, uh, it, but, um, you know, it's, 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 it's Thunderbolt speed. So it's the highest spec USB-C then technically. Um, and uh, same colors. I decided to go with the blue this time just to be different. I usually get the space gray. Um, is it still even called space gray anymore? It's called, yeah, it's still space gray. Okay, so anyway, MagSafe, braided cord, two Thunderbolt ports. For me, if I need to do some editing on the go, I can bring a dock, I can make it work. It's not that big of a deal. So let's end on a negative note. This. Ready Player One, okay? This is, this to me is ridiculous. And please, please prove me wrong. Please send me a comment and tell me how, sorry, how stupid I am. Tell me how stupid I am for thinking this is absolutely crazy. There, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I feel the way I feel. And I assume a lot of people are gonna feel the same way. First of all, the elephant in the room to start, right? To start. It's starting at $3,500. So what do you get for $3,500? Now, Apple has historically been really, really good with coming into the game late, tweaking what's out there, putting the Apple coat of paint on things, and making it faster, better, lighter, cheaper, whatever. Um, usually not cheaper, but usually faster, better, um, and more of a must-have device. Remember Steve Jobs' reality distor distortion field? He would convince you you needed this. He would be, in my mind, rolling over in his grave right now. I cannot believe that someone thinks that the use scenario of this device is going to sell at $3,500. Now, maybe, maybe this might sell in some sort of educational or commercial variant, kind of like how the Microsoft HoloLens did. Um, but this is ridiculous. So $3,500, what are you going to get? You're going to get a headset. It's going to be lighter. Great. It's going to have Apple's design. Great. It's going to have a screen on the outside so you can see your eyes in it so it's not really weird when people walk into the room and see a big thing strapped to your head. Great. It has you know, the equivalent of a pixel density equal, I think, to seven microns. And if that's true, like seven microns is the width of a red blood cell. So that's pretty small. So it's going to be ultra high resolution. Great. But you are, you, you are paying $3,500 for a virtual 3D iPad. There is no killer app yet. I don't need to watch a movie on a fake screen for $3,500. I don't need to do iMessages on a three-dimensional desktop for $3,500. I don't need to look at photos on a headset for $3,500. I don't need to bring this on an airplane. I don't need to play Apple Arcade games on a virtual screen, which is basically the same as just, you know, putting it up on a nice TV 
Apple TV, Apple Arcade, and playing some games there, the games aren't worth a $3,500 device to view them on. Not in its current state. Where are zombies, AR, coming into the rooms of my house through the windows that I have to take out? That's the apps that I need to see. You want to get good augmented reality? You know, have me defend my own home. Let me run around the house and pretend I'm fighting off zombies. That I would do. Even then, $3,500? I don't know. But the point is, is you need to have something that makes this a must-have device, and they don't have it here. And I hate to see this. I'm an Apple fanboy. I don't even wait for the ink to dry on the packaging. I buy stuff. But I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. It's, it's, it is Apple-ified Oculus at like four times the price. Wait, wait a minute, like eight times the price, right? So it's, I don't know, I don't know what they're, I don't know how they can justify this. I don't know how they can and say, oh yeah, this is going to be a slam dunk. Because, and maybe when I, maybe if I go into the store and I use it, maybe that will change my mind. I have no idea. But how, how do you do this? And there'll be a lot of fanboys who'll be like, oh, this is great. This is going to be the greatest thing in the world. But like, it's not worth the cost of admission right now. You're basically getting a 3D iPad. You're watching movies. You're doing iMessages. You're doing work. You want to pay $3,500 to do work on a, on a virtual headset? Be my guest. Be my guest. But I, I just, you know, more power to you. Please put in the comments below, tell me how I'm wrong here because I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I was disappointed. Um, you know, one of the things I kind of see them hinting at, and if you watch the, if you watch the keynote, they talked a bunch about how this is like the first iteration of their path toward AR. So, you know, you heard some of the rumors, I'm sure in the past that there was a second version of this. It was a smaller, lighter version. I heard more expensive. That was the rumor that they didn't get this done in time for this keynote. And I do think that this is necessary. I think for Apple to make these smaller and smaller and smaller, more usable, you have to start somewhere, right? Remember the first iPhone didn't even have an app store. You were stuck with the apps that you had on it. That was it. So I get it. But the first iPhone wasn't $3,500. So I think that, you know, I hope that they can find a way to make this cheaper, lighter, better. And then get some really good apps. And, and the other thing, the other thing, quickly to bring up, the other thing that I thought was interesting is that, you know, Apple is now creating, you know, you know, extra resources for the Apple developer or the Windows developer probably, right? Because talking about games uh, to run on Apple Silicon. So I think that that's, you know, that's, that's where this is headed. They want to try to entice probably big game manufacturers to move their stuff over to Mac because that is the one, that's the last island that PC can't, that Mac can't touch. They just cannot touch it. And, you know, if, if there was ever a way that, you know, Microsoft would allow some sort of, you know, developer tools to, you know, trans, you know, to make games on Mac and utilize DirectX, I don't even know if that's possible because, I mean, it's completely different processors, right? But that's what's missing. So, you know, when I use my VR headset, I have an Oculus. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing games like Elite Dangerous where I'm like in the ship. I'm looking around. I'm seeing spaceships. It's impressive. I feel like I'm there. When you fly toward a sun, it's like, whoa. It's, it is completely breathtaking. But the only game that I remember seeing on this keynote was NBA on a virtual screen. All the other things, basically, basically, all the other things you can do on an Oculus through the Facebook integration, no one's interested in it. People want apps. People want to play games. People want to run around the military. They want to play games like Damio. They want to play games like, you know, uh, geez, I forget the final battle, the, the, um, the game that's the battle royale. I forget what it is, but it's, it, you know, they want interactive gaming experiences. 
inter they want horror things. They want you sitting in a chair while somebody's like dragging a chainsaw around behind you and you can hear them. They want that like feel of realism and they just don't have that. A floating UI is not realism enough. And being able to switch the background from your room to, you know, the Sahara Desert, I don't know. You tell me. Anyway, that's the hardware. I think it's one of probably the biggest hardware event of WWDC because usually it's all about the software. And of course, they have to announce the hardware if they're going to announce developing the software for it. So I get it. Um, and maybe they're trying to balance it out. Um, the We can certainly talk about Mac OS, you know, iPad OS, iOS, TV OS, watch OS as well. I think watch OS had the best unique changes for the better. Um, I'm not too excited about the journal app. I think Facebook's basically a journal app, but you know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but, um, you know, everything's there. There's small incremental tweaks, uh, things that make things, uh, use, easier to use. I didn't think from what I remember, there was any like killer new app, um, that's gonna, you know, change everything on these devices, but you know, much needed refinements. Hopefully air bugs are fixed, especially with share play, especially with connectivity to, you know, AirPods and AirPods Max and stuff like that. That stuff's got to be improved. Um, it's not horrible, but it has to be improved. And hopefully that does that. And uh, we'll see. But hardware, 75% good, 25% WTF. Anyway. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, you know, catch me on social media, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitch, Kick, all those things. But I hope you guys agree. Please let me know. Put some comments down below. Tell me what you think. Tell me I don't know what I'm talking about and tell me why. That's what I want to hear. All right, guys. Have a good one.